This is Brooke from MC Audio, and uh, we're going to show you here how to change a tone arm and an RCA. We've already taken the back off of this uh, technique, and as you can see, this is the bottom of where the tone arm attaches. Someone's already been in this table. Obviously, they don't come with yellow cables. So we're going to remove first the brace that holds the wire. This is normally a two-part piece. It looks like they had omitted it in whoever did the repair last time on this, which wasn't someone from MC Audio. This is repaired wrong. We're going to do it right. Easiest thing to do at this point, since we know we're replacing all of the RCAs and the ground, so we're just going to cut them to make it easier to deal with. Okay, next part is going to be removing the RCAs. Pretty simple. Do not pull on the RCA. Be patient with it and wait for it to heat up and just nudge gently on it. If you pull too hard, you can pull the actual contact right off of the technique board. Don't need a particularly high temperature soldering iron either. We've only got this set at 450. thing I'm going to do is remove the actual tone arm wires. Now these you want to be really careful with as well because you do not want to damage the circuit board. I just use a little metal probe to kind of lightly pull the wire away. If this is a good point right now for you to write down black, green, red, white, blue so you remember what order they go back in. removed all the wires now and cleaned up the board a little bit and also pre-tinned everything with a little bit of solder to make it easier when we reassemble everything. I need to take off the circuit board all the way. This right here is the tone arm lift lock. It's what keeps it uh, locked so you cannot raise or lower the tone arm. First thing you're going to have to do is pull off this pressure ring. Be really careful so it doesn't fly away on you. I just tend to grab it with my fingers. You can use a little screwdriver or pliers if you need to. It's also a little brass washer. Then remove these two screws. After removing the plate clamp, you'll need to remove two screws that are right down here. One and two. And these are going to drop your tone arm. That's the hole. That little triangle there is where you want it to go. Alright, now let's show them the other side. So it goes down through the white part. And then if you look on this side, you see that your lead wire is running through that triangle shaped hole. That's where your tone arm wires need to go. Here's your new tone arm. Wires are already pre-twisted usually. What I like to do is I just take this black ground wire and wrap it around with the rest of these. 
makes it easier to get through. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to take this wire and starting at the bottom of this twist I'm going to take this and wrap it the, op the same way that these cords are wound. This is my guide wire that I ran through my turntable. Then going the opposite direction I'm just going to braid this one over the top in a nice little loop. Makes it pretty easy. And we're going to set our turntable toe and arm where it belongs. Grab our lead wire. This is an excellent opportunity. If you look straight down here, you will see what is the anti-skate mechanism. It has a little metal hook that moves with the rotation of the anti-skate wheel. You want the post of the tone arm to come up on the other side of it. There's a little hook you can see in there. If you get a look at that. That little hook needs to be on the proper side of the tone arm, so I just move it all the way over to here. You can see the little brass post coming up. And there we go. We've now run the wires through. Time to put the two little screws that hold it in place. At this point, you can actually clamp the tone arm clamp on the other side. Magnetized screwdriver really helps out for this task. And obviously unwrap your wire, which is easy to remember, because the last wrap came on the opposite way that the cords twist. And then the last bit of wire comes right off. Now we put this back in place. The tone arm lift lock. It has a little post that goes down into this hole. And then the opening of it goes around. And you can see that you have to have it unlocked for it to slide into place. And this will get your tone arm sitting in the proper configuration. Put that back in place. Don't forget your little brass washer. And you got a little clip to put back on. I like to make sure it free spins, that means it's on there properly. Now comes the circuit board. We're only going to attach one side of the circuit board right now this time, because we still have to do our ground wire fix. You don't have to tighten it up very much, it's most just to hold it in place. Now, if we remember our orders, the oral tone arm was black, green, red, white, blue. Time to attach the tone arm wires. Be really gentle with these wires, they break very easily. Normally the colors are black, green, 
then red, white, blue. But in this instance, there seems to be a brown wire substituted for a green. Sometimes I switch them out. Not exactly sure the reasoning behind it. But not uncommon. Once again, really gentle with these wires. They can quite easily be broken. Right now we're going to attach the RCAs back to the board I'm using a HOSA brand cable because you can peel back the shielding which will make it fit really nicely coming through the housing on the top of the metal plate. I've also put a couple drops of solder and pre-tinned my lines to make it nice and easy. One of the things you can do if you want to make sure you're putting the RCA on as long as you follow the black brown, red, white, blue or black, green, red, white, blue depending on your tone arm you can follow the red line to the red part of your RCA. The outside wrap I make a little shorter than the post line. Makes it fit in there a little nicer. Once again I can follow the white lead over and I know that that's going to be my left channel. Same thing with the left channel natural. And we're going to fasten a zip tie on there. This is to keep it from getting yanked off the board if someone puts pressure on it or it falls off of a table. I like to put it away around the whole side of the board if you can. Pull it snug. Now we can do that ground wire that we ripped off. Same thing, I've pre-tinned this. I have not pre-tinned the line that's going to be on the ground. So what we're going to do is put these two wires together. You can twist them if you like, I usually keep them straight. And we're just going to feed them through the hole of the original ground. And I just kind of bend my fingers over top of it. And we'll solder it. Once again, Rob's going to help me out here with a third hand. There we got a good connection. Now we can reattach the long ground screw. My last post on how to double ground a technique, you saw pictures of where it goes around. This is actually that ground wire that comes out and goes all the way over to the 
technique, pitch control. And there we go. Everything's on there nice and sturdy. It's looking good. Now we attach the plate. As you saw when we took it off, it was on upside down and wrong. We're going to put it on right. The raised edges on the relief on it, rounded side up. Just going to feed the RCA through the bottom of the plate. Along with the ground. sit on there like so. I always put the metal plate in first. This is the retaining plastic clampy thingy. I don't know the exact term for it. Keeps the stress off the wire. <laughs> and uh, you want the U-shape facing backwards over the part of the wire you strip. That's why I use the HOSA cables because they have two layers and this layer will fit really nicely inside the original Technique piece. I don't necessarily snap them together in my hand, but putting them down on the board helps put a little pressure on it. And there you go. That's how you change a tone arm and RCA and put a new ground wire on a technique.